You know, um, if I look at the course of my life and look at investment wisdom, <clears throat> I'm, re I'm reminded of a few things. One, Warren Buffett said, if you wouldn't hold that thing for 10 years, you shouldn't hold it for 10 minutes. So if you start with this just Warren Buffett idea, find high quality property, high quality assets that you believe in. And if you're not sure you would hold it for 10 years, instead of investing in it, you probably should invest in learning more about it, right? Study something long enough, right? But Google, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Bitcoin. Study something long enough that you believe in it. And, uh, and then when you buy it, buy it with a 10 year idea and be thinking, I'm gonna just hold this investment. I'm gonna hold this asset for a decade. By the way, the same is true with a house. If I bought a house, I wouldn't buy a house that I expected to sell in three years or two years. If you don't think you can live the rest of your life in that house, you could rent. I mean, when, when, when you buy a property, if you buy a, tr if you buy a piece of art, you know, buy something that you love, you know, uh, that you're going to be committed to for a long period of time, because that's a higher test. And I think when people buy stuff and they're like, well, I know it's got bugs and I know there are problems, but I'm not going to keep it that long, right? What you've done is you've lowered your standards. When you buy your dream home and you say, I'm going to retire here and live here the rest of my life, you don't live in fear that you have to find some other sucker to sell it to, you know, because you don't have to sell it because you bought it because you're committed to it. You're married to it. So I, I think that, I think that, uh, that Buffett sets a good example there. He bought Coca-Cola stock 50 years ago or something. He still holds Coca-Cola stock. And um, I mean, think uh, when you raise the bar to that standard, it makes things a lot easier. It, what it says is you're going to be much, you're going to, you're going to make a decision. They're going to make an allocation. And then you're not going to stress out every day, every minute, every week, every month, staring at the price. Like if, if, if you went every dinner party, if you went out and you got drunk and then you met everybody and you said, Hey, I want to show you my house. How much will you give me for it right now? People would be, you know, you paid whatever, 500,000 euros for it. And someone's like, I'll give you 400,000 euros. You'd be so depressed. How much will you give me for it? I'll give you 600,000. You're ecstatic. And then, you know, two in the morning and you're really drunk. How much? And then you find someone who's even drunker than you. How much will you give me for it? 300,000. Now you're really depressed. Now I'm going to slit my wrist. It's because you're continually overindulging in this exercise. If you just said, this is my beautiful house, I love it, I'm going to live in it the rest of my life, you know, then, then it's a totally different situation. If I look at all the mistakes that, that I made, the mistakes are, are generally, just about every investment I ever made was a good one. Because I only bought good things. All my mistakes are, I wish I bought more. And my second mistake is, I'm, I'm sad that I ever sold it for any reason. Once you figure out, once you figure out what you love, then you buy it. And then your question really is, well, if I'm going to sell it, what's better than what I'm, than what I'm already holding. And that's what I would ask anybody that's selling Bitcoin right now. That's what I was asking when it was 10,000 a coin. I said, who are these people selling this to me? Like, what could they possibly be buying with the money I'm giving them? That's better than what I'm buying from them. And the same is true. You've got a network Bitcoin. It's pretty obvious that the world appreciates it. It's common property. It's acknowledged by everybody in the world as a, as a dominant digital network. We know there's more inflation coming. We know that technology is advancing. We know that people like being able to put things on their smartphones. So if you believe in technology, if you believe, you know, if you believe in the future of assets, like the only reason you would ever sell a high quality piece of property is to buy something higher quality, right? You don't, everyone that's successful in life, they don't get successful by trading rapidly in and out. I mean, Bill Gates, Steve Ballmer, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, they're not trading in and out of their property, right? They're buying property. They're holding it for 30 years, right? And so I think that uh, just figure out what you love, 
if you're not sure what you love, do more research. When you when you've done the research, the you know Warren Buffett said one other thing. He said the ideal holding company is uh, the the ideal holding period is forever. Right, that's the way you should think. If you're a, if you're a wise investor, buy something that you can give to your children's children. And if you think that way, there's a higher hurdle. Right? Look, maybe maybe you want to speculate and maybe you want to gamble and maybe you want to invest. Okay. Well, so take a portion of your assets that you invest for the long term and you allocate that to the highest quality property you can find, which I think is Bitcoin, but you can decide. And the other portion is investment risk and you're going to actually that Facebook might be Peloton this quarter. But that you're taking a risk. And then maybe some is venture capital, you invest in private companies. That's a much that's a 10x bigger risk. And then maybe some is speculation and you gamble with it. And that's a 100x greater risk. As long as you're those four buckets, you're rational, then okay, do that, but be rational about it. And uh, you know, if you if you really want to be successful, the really successful investors, they picked something, they committed to it, and they stayed with it, and they're unshakable in their conviction because the world will generate 10,000 anxiety-inducing headlines over the course of the next 10 years, and every one of them will be calculated to get your attention by creating maximum anxiety, and there's only one mistake you can make, which is to sell That's the one mistake and then everybody in the universe is going to try to get you to sell because if they don't create anxiety, right? Inflammation or, or enragement is engagement, right? If they don't create the anxiety, you won't read the story. It's clickbait. You know, sometimes people post stories about me on YouTube and they say Michael Saylor said he'll sell his bitcoin when this happens. And I go, "Whoa!" And then I want to click on it. I'm like, "Wait a minute, I am Michael Saylor, and I know I'm not selling my Bitcoin. They still got me to click on it. That good. <laughs> the in, the media is is engaged in getting you to react. And there's only one mistake when you've made the right decision. When you when you your life is set, you've got the perfect house and the perfect family and the perfect assets and the perfect property. The only mistake is get panicked out of your position. So don't yeah. panic.